So in this lecture, we're going to discuss the following two important physical quantities that help us describe the location or position of our object. And these are distance and displacement. Now distance is a scalar. It only has magnitude. While our displacement is a vector. It has both magnitude as well as direction. So let's look at the following example. Suppose we have a person that walks from point A to point B along this blue curve, along this blue path. Now what is our displacement of the person and what is our distance the person takes or walks when he goes from point A to point B? Well the distance represents the actual pathway that our person took. In other words, if we take this blue curve and we outstretch it until it's a straight line and we measure that blue path, that represents our distance the person traveled. It's the actual pathway taken by our person. The displacement, however, is not the actual pathway taken, but it's the most direct pathway that he could have taken to get from path A to path B. And in this case, it's a straight line going from path A to path B, so it's a vector. So it has both magnitude and direction. The magnitude is this much, and our direction is going this way. So in this case, our displacement is less than our distance. Now, let's look at example number two. Let's suppose now that person gets in the car and he travels around in this circular pathway with a radius r. Let's suppose the car travels from point A to point B. What is my displacement and, and what is my distance now? Well, my distance is the actual pathway taken by my car. So it goes from point A to point B along the semicircle. So to find my distance, from A to B, I simply divide my circumference by 2, and I get pi over R. To find my displacement, my displacement is a vector. It's the most direct pathway that the car could have taken that, to get from A to B. So that represents this pathway, and that's simply 2R, or that's our diameter of our circle. So our displacement from A to B is simply 2R. What about if our car traveled from A to B and then back to A? So it traveled in a circle. What is my distance and what is my displacement now? Well, the distance is the actual pathway taken, so it's simply our circumference. It's 2 pi r. And my displacement in going from A back to A is simply zero, right? So what is, the, what is the most direct pathway that our car could have taken to get from point A back to point A? Well, the car could have just stayed the same place, and so our displacement is zero. Let's look at our final example. Let's suppose we catapult a ball up in this parabolic pathway. So our ball travels in this parabolic pathway, it gets to the highest point, and then it travels down and ends up on the ground, back on the ground on this location. What is our distance traveled? The distance traveled, once again, is the pathway taken. So if we take this parabolic pathway and we outstretch it, that's the actual distance traveled. The displacement, displacement represents the most direct pathway that our ball could have taken to get from this point to this point. Well, the ball could have just rolled in a straight line from this path, from this point to this point. And this distance represents, or this net distance, represents our displacement of the ball. So once again, our distance traveled is or has only magnitude, it's a scalar. And the distance is the actual pathway our object took, while the displacement is the most direct pathway that our object could have taken to get from point A to point B.